Hi, everybody. This is Pastor Joshua Sullivan at Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Thanks for joining me for another episode of ATP Ask the Pastor. Today's question is about the Masonic Lodge. Someone writes in, Dear Pastor, I'm writing to ask why the Lutheran Church is so very, very opposed to the Masonic Lodge. Please show me from Scripture and Scripture alone why the Masonic Lodge is forbidden. Yeah, sure. Uh, to put it simply, the Masonic Lodge is its own religion uh, whose beliefs and teachings about God and salvation are incompatible with the scriptures uh, and antithetical to historic Christianity. Let's explore this a little bit. We can uh, really uh, distill this down into two main points. First, let's talk about God in Freemasonry. The God of Freemasonry is not the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as he's revealed in the Holy Scriptures. Rather, the God of Freemasonry is always addressed as the great architect of the universe. Now, that is not a title that you will find anywhere in the 66 books of the Bible, or in the Apocrypha, for that matter. It's also not a title for God that you'll find in any other religious text from any other religion throughout the world. And this was done purposefully, because the Masonic Lodge does not want to show partiality to any one God, but rather, in the Masonic Lodge's teachings, all religions are equal. All of them uh, have an equal claim to the truth. This makes the Masonic Lodge a universalistic religion in which all roads lead to Rome, spiritually speaking, of course. Now, to join the Masonic Lodge, uh, one does have to profess belief in God. The thing is, they don't care which God you profess belief in. Because again, all gods are equal. In fact, the Lodge views itself as being above all the other religions uh, and above their differences because it views Freemasonry as the original fount and source of all the religions in the world then. So it is the fountain for which every single other religion uh, uh, flows. Uh, they were just, uh, those other religions were just simply corrupted with error as it crept in throughout the centuries and throughout the millennia. Then. So all religions spring from Freemasonry, uh, but have been corrupted throughout time. And this is what makes uh, Freemasonry then uh, able to say, in their own estimation, that they are above all this. And that's why it doesn't matter to which faith you belong. Now, uh, you don't have to take my word for this. Let's hear from a man named Albert Pike, who was a famous Freemason of the Scottish Rite. He wrote this in his book, Morals and Dogma. He says, We do not undervalue the importance of any truth. We utter no word that can be deemed irreverent by anyone of any faith. We do not tell the Muslim that it is only important for him to believe that there is but one God, but wholly unessential whether Muhammad is his prophet. We do not tell the Hebrew that the Messiah whom he expects was born in Bethlehem nearly 2,000 years ago, and that he is a heretic because he will not so believe. And as little do we tell the sincere Christian that Jesus of Nazareth was but a man like us, or his history, but the unreal revival of an older legend. To do either is beyond our jurisdiction. Masonry of no one age belongs to all time. Of no one religion it finds its great truths in all. To every Mason there is one God. There, there is a God, excuse me. To every Mason there is a God, one supreme, infinite in goodness, wisdom, foresight, justice, and benevolence, creator, disposer, and preserver of all things, how or by what intermediaries he creates and acts, and in what ways he unfurls and manifests himself, masonry leaves to creeds and religions to inquire. It reverences all the great reformers. It sees in Moses the lawgiver of the Jews, in Confucius and Zoroaster, in Jesus of Nazareth, and in the Arabian iconoclast, great teachers of morality and eminent reformers, if no more, and allows every brother of the order to assign to each such higher and even divine character as his creed and truth require. From Pike's words, uh, it's very clear that in Freemasonry, man is above God, because man gets to choose his God and find his truth therein. So the Lodge does not uh, confess that God is the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, as taught in the Holy Scriptures. It is rather a syncretic religion that allows every religion equality under the authority and deity of the Lodge. Now, I think this is obviously incompatible and even antithetical uh, to the God of the Scriptures, based on what the Lord says about himself. He says in Exodus 20, verse 3, at the beginning of the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. 
He also says in Isaiah 42, verse 8, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will not give to another. Now, the second difference then, the second major difference here between Christianity and Freemasonry has to do with um, their view of man and therefore their view of Christ then. What they believe about Jesus is much different than what you're being taught in a Christian church. The Lodge does not teach that man is inherently sinful from birth. David says in Psalm 51 verse 5, Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. The Lodge teaches instead that man is not inherently sinful, but rather that man is like a stone freshly taken from the quarry. He has rough uh, and jagged edges, and he needs to polish off those rough and jagged edges. So man isn't sinful. They have no original sin. Man isn't uh, sinful inherently and in need of salvation, in need of a savior. But rather in their belief, man is simply imperfect. Now again, Albert Pike, who I quoted above, writes this. To achieve it, salvation, the Mason must first attain a solid conviction, founded upon reason, that he hath within him a spiritual nature, a soul that is not to die when the body is dissolved, but is to continue to exist and to advance toward perfection through all ages of eternity, and to see more and more clearly as it draws nearer unto God the light of the divine presence. A few things from this. So salvation, according to Freemasonry, is earned by continual moral improvement. Not only in this life, but this advancement towards perfection, he says, happens throughout all ages of eternity. Meaning that even after the Mason dies, in the afterlife, he's still um, gaining morally and improving morally and seeing more and more and more of the divine light. Uh, this is nothing other than simple, undiluted works righteousness, which says... If I try to better myself, and if I try to continually get better morally, and try to be a better person, then God will reward that in the life of the world to come, or as they say, in the Great Lodge above. Now, if salvation is attained by works, uh, and not by faith in Christ's uh, work for mankind, then you can see that, according to the Lodge, there is no need for Christ's work uh, in his righteousness, in his, in his merits that he earns, uh, or in his innocent, bitter sufferings and death for our sins. Uh, nor is there any need to proclaim the merits of Christ and his atoning death for the sake of sinners. And so again, I think we can see uh, this is incompatible and antithetical to scriptures because the scriptures say, A, that we are all born sinful and in need of a savior. Uh, our problem is not simply, uh, our problem cannot simply be fixed by moral self-improvement and self-polishing, but rather we need a savior from sin. Nor then uh, is this, does this jive with what the scriptures teach about Christ, who he is in his person, as we've mentioned before, as far as who God is, but also then uh, that salvation comes by grace through faith. Uh, whereas the Lodge says that salvation comes through uh, gaining morality, St. Paul says that uh, salvation is, is the exact opposite of that in Ephesians chapter 2, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, lest anyone should boast. So there you have it. In Freemasonry, God is not triune. Jesus is not of the same substance as the Father, uh, nor is he the Savior of sinners because man is not sinful and he does not need a Savior because he can pull himself up by his moral bootstraps. Uh, this is why the church does not allow her saints to hold membership in the church and in the Masonic Lodge. It's a syncretistic religion where all gods and all religions are equal. Uh, all truth is the same under the Masonic head. Ultimately, uh, it's a syncretistic religion. And because of that, then, it's a Christless religion uh, and a gospel of works righteousness and self-improvement then. So there you have it. That's historically why not just the Lutheran Church, but most, uh, most historic churches haven't allowed their members to hold membership in the Lodge because it is another religion that's antithetical to the Christian faith. Thanks for the question. If you've got a question you'd like me to take a shot at, shoot me an email, atpholycross at gmail.com. That's all one word, atpholycross at gmail.com. We'll put your question in the queue, and we'll get to you as soon as we're able. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on Ask the Pastor.